Praise the Lord with harps, sing praises unto him with the lute, an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto the Lord a new song, sing praises lustily unto him with a good courage. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are faithful. He loveth righteousness and judgment, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together, as it were upon an heap, and layeth up the deep as in a treasure house. Let all the earth fear the Lord, stand in awe of him, all ye that dwell in the world. For he spake, and it was done, he commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught, and maketh the devices of the people to be of none effect, and casteth out the counsels of princes, the counsel of the Lord shall endure forever, and the thoughts of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord Jehovah, and blessed are the folk that he hath chosen to him to be his inheritance. The Lord looked down from heaven and beheld all the children of men. From the habitation of his dwelling he considereth all them that dwell on the earth. He fashioneth all the hearts of them and understandeth all their works. There is no king that can be saved by the multitude of an host. Neither is any mighty man delivered by much strength. A horse is counted but a vain thing to save a man. Neither shall he deliver any man by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, and upon them that put their trust in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to feed them in the time of dearth. Our soul hath patiently tarried for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have hoped in his holy name. Let thy merciful kindness, O Lord, be upon us, like as we do put our trust in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the 14th chapter of the book of Job, beginning at the first verse. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And doth thou open thine eyes upon such an one and bringest me unto judgment with thee, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him, that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it will be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet though the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth boughs like the plant. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. 
O that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. For now thy numberest thy, my steps, dost thou not watch over my sin? My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up mine iniquity. And surely the mountains falling cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of his place. The waters where the stones, thou washest away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroyest the hope of man. Thou prevailest forever against him, and he passeth. Thou changest his countenance, and sendest him away. His sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. For his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Here ends the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the seventh chapter of the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, beginning at the seventh verse. What shall we say, then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. The commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me, by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent under the law, unto the law, that is good. Now, then, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more that I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 
I find then a law that, when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. A wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Here ends the second lesson. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Lord have mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee, Grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping of thy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Confident 
that God hears us when we cry out to him in our need. We now place our petitions before him. Confirm the church as the true heir of the promise, empowering our people to declare in their time the everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look with pity on a world that is often sick and does not know its need of healing. Lift the crushing weight of fear from those who live by law without mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our families, friends, and neighbors with health of mind and body. Fill us with love and forgiveness for those who have offended us. Help us to receive them in love, acknowledging our own need of healing and pardon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have pity on those who feel that society has despised and rejected them. Come with your healing power to the chronically sick who despair of health. Make them know that they are not forsaken in their suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise up to eternal life the souls of the departed. Have mercy on all who mourn, especially for the death of a child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>